Praise the Lord, friends. I'm so glad that you're connected with us today. I'm going to be sharing all of this week on four keys to faith. This is one of my favorite messages, one of my favorite subjects to teach. Faith in God will change the world. And faith in God specifically will change your world. Now, we're going to begin in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, which says this, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it takes faith to please God, and if we're going to please God, right, there are two aspects really of faith, and they are number one, we must believe that God is. Now the Bible actually says in the book of James that the devils believe and tremble. So not just believing that God is, but it says he must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. One translation says they must believe both that God is and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Now, as we study the New Testament, there are really two uh, things that stand out in the New Testament far beyond all others. There are two major aspects. Number one is the, the message of grace. And the message of grace essentially is the message of what God has done for us in the person of Jesus Christ when he died and rose again. So grace is God making available his goodness to us. And the message of faith is our positive response to grace or our positive response to the gospel. Now, when we begin to think about the realm of faith, how, how do we walk in faith? How do we move into faith? We're really talking about how we move into it, how it works in our life. And Jesse DePlanis has been my friend for a number of years. He's come and spoken at the church now for over 10 years. And one thing that Jesse said at one point in time, and I really believe Jesse is a great man of faith, it really spoke to me. And he said, most of the time in the realm of faith, I made a decision and God backed it. Praise God. So when, you know, the, the first thing that I want to talk about in the realm of faith is the power to make a decision. G great people of faith are decisive people. And really, my two mentors are Dr. Lester Sumrall and Andrew Womack. And both these men I consider to be great men of faith. And both men are, are decisive men. They make a decision. They're going with that decision. And praise God, that's the, that's the way it is. Praise God. And so um, when we study the, the, the subject of faith in the Bible, when we study through the book of uh, Hebrews, and in Hebrews 11 specifically, the faith hall of fame, so to speak, all these Old Testament heroes of faith, we see that great people of faith were, were people who made a decision. Abel chose to bring an offering to God, to bring his best offering. By, a, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice, the scripture says, than Cain. Enoch chose to walk with God. Dr. Lester Sumrall said you could define faith as a walk with God. And so Enoch, the seventh from Adam, the Bible says, walked with God, and he was not, for God received him. And so you study that out. If you study the, the genealogies in Genesis, Enoch was the seventh generation from Adam. And Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. You can read about that in the book of Jude. And uh, if you study those genealogies, you'll find that Adam was still alive when Enoch was a little boy. And so I believe that Enoch heard Adam talking about how he missed it in the Garden of Eden, how he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, how it brought great destruction on the human race, so on and so forth. And I believe that Enoch, when he heard uh, Adam talk, you see, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, 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 the word of God. He heard Adam talking about how to walk with God in the cool of the garden. Enoch had that desire in his heart to walk with God. And, and so, you know, as he had that desire, he believed that, hey, I, could, I can get that back. I can walk with God. And, and one day, praise God, he walked with God. We go on down in the Faith Hall of Fame in Hebrews chapter 11. We find that Noah chose to build an ark to the saving of his house. 
we find that Abraham and Sarah, they, they made a decision to follow God, to go out into a land where they, you know, uh, really were not known and, and did not understand, but they, they became pioneers of faith. So when we talk about faith and making a decision, remember this statement by Jesse Duplantis, most of the time in the realm of faith, I made a decision and God backed it. What are the key decisions that we make in life? Well, there's one main decision that you make, and I think all other decisions really flow forth from this decision, and that is the decision is who are we going to serve? Who am I going to serve? Who are you going to serve? Are we going to serve Jesus? Are we going to serve Christ? Are we going to serve ourselves? Are we going to serve Christ? Or are we going to serve the world? Are we going to serve Christ? Or are we going to serve the devil? Praise God. You want to make the decision, I'm going to serve Jesus Christ first and foremost. Now in Joshua 24, at the end of Joshua's life, verse 15, he said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He made a quality decision, I'm going to serve the Lord. And he followed through on that decision. You know, I made that decision years ago. I made that decision as a young child when I was eight years old to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord, as my personal Savior. I made a decision not only when I was eight years old, I made a decision when I was 14 years old. And I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that, you know, I was going to give my life to the ministry, to, to, to the ministry, to serving Christ and serving others through serving Christ and, and uh, serving Christ through serving others. And I made that decision as a young man. I made that decision when I was 17 years old. My grandfather and grandmother had a ranch and my dad and I had worked on that ranch and they'd promised to give us that ranch so on and so forth. And my dad went home to be with Jesus, went home early when I was 17. My grandparents came to me and said, Lawson, if you'll stay here and if you'll give your life to run this ranch, we will give this to you. I said, well, that, I can't do that. I can't make that choice because I've made a, a decision, you know, to, to go into the ministry and to follow God and do what it now. If they'd have said, we'll give you that wrench and not tied a bunch of strings to it, I would have taken it, you know. But at the same point in time, they made that that thing. I said, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to go into the ministry, and so I, I can't take you up on that offer. And so I made a decision as a young man. I made that decision again, you know, when I stepped forward into the ministry, that I'm going to let Jesus Christ be my absolute, not only Savior, but my Lord, the Lord of my decisions. Um, I made that decision when we moved to Colorado Springs to start Karis Christian Center. I was just 36 years old, and it was very difficult, but I made a decision. This is what we're doing. I don't care what it costs me. I made this decision. I'm going to follow Christ. It's not about money. It's about Him. Um, we had been pastoring in Kit Carson for 13 years at that point in time. We had a church building paid off. We had a, a, you know, a, a, a house paid off. We had our vehicles paid off. We had a small business, a small feedlot paid off. We, we were moving in a good direction financially, but God said, I want you to go. And after a period of prayer and seeking God, God gave Barbara and I direction to come to Colorado Springs. And so I made this decision when I was 17 years old. I, it's not about money, it's about Christ. I made this decision again when I was 36 years old. It's not about money, it's about Christ. I've made that decision, praise God. I am following Jesus Christ. Who are we going to serve? Now, basically, if you study Joshua 24 and read verse 13 to verse 25, he says, God brought you out of the land of Egypt and God brought you into this land of promise and he's given you cities and lands and farms and, and you know now what are you going to do with what God's given you what are, are you going to serve God or are you going to serve the devil as for me and my house we will serve the Lord he made a quality decision I am going to serve Jesus Christ I'm going to serve God and we, we need to make a quality decision today that I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't make a quality decision to serve Jesus Christ, you lose by default. You see, Jesus said this in John 14, verse 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. In fact, my son Aaron brought this out yesterday in our staff meeting. This, this is a powerful truth. I told him that I was going to steal this from him, and here I am one day out taking this from him, but he said, I want you to look at the words in black in John 14, and, and most of all John 14 is in red, and this was from three of Jesus' disciples. Thomas said to him, Jesus said, I'm, I'm going place and, and, and the way you know, and, 
in verse 4 and verse 5. This is what Aaron was talking about. Lord, we know not where you go, and how, how, how can we know the way? <laughs> you know, the disciples have been following him for two years at this point. Over two years. And Jesus is thinking, what kind of bunch of guys am I trying to tr train here? And Jesus says to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He says, if you had known me, you should have known the Father. Then Philip says to him, Lord, show us the Father and it will be sufficient. In other words, it's never enough. Jesus said, if I've been so long with you, Philip, and you say, show me the Father. We haven't seen the Father. Don't you believe that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? Later on in verse 22, Judas said to him, not as scary. Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Now, realize this. This is written in, in, in John 14, 15, and 16. Jesus was preparing to depart, preparing his disciples for the departure. And, and there's a couple of things that he talks about. Number one, he talks about our need for the person, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. So they had not at this time been born again. You know, the Bible actually says that John the Baptist was, was the greatest uh, until Jesus' time that walked on earth. And Jesus said, yet he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Indicating that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you've received something that's far beyond anything that any of these Old Testament saints had. And, and this is evidence that these disciples, until they got born again and filled with the Spirit, they did not possess what we possess. And so that's one reason they could follow Christ for a long time and really not understand who he was and not understand where he was taking them. Judas says in verse 22, and not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not the world? And Jesus said, you got to keep the word, praise God. So we need the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and in John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus talks about that. He also talks about not only do we need the Holy Spirit and our relationship with the Holy Spirit, he talks about our authority in Christ. Now, those things became a reality through the death and resurrection of Christ and, and essentially after Jesus' resurrection, the disciples were born again and then he sent the Holy Spirit and, and it totally changed their life. And, and, and they began to walk in a greater level of revelation than they had walked in all this time following him prior to that for about three years. And so, um, but we've got to make a quality decision. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. There's only one way to get to God and that's through Jesus Christ. There's only one way of salvation. Jesus is the only way of salvation. The Bible actually says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse three, that if, if any man does not confess that Jesus is the Lord, there is only one Lord. Jesus is the Lord, praise God. God made Jesus Lord when he raised him from the dead. Now, John wrote about that in, the, in his epistle in 1 John chapter four, in fact, this is how we tell the difference between those who are of the truth and those who are not. And we're going to read the first four verses of, of 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit who confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus came in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Where have you heard that it would come and even now already is in the world? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What are you confessing about Jesus? What are you confessing about God? Okay, we need to confess Jesus Christ is the Lord. Jesus Christ, he is God manifest in the flesh. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus came in the flesh is not of God. This is the Antichrist. So the way that we overcome the world is by fully following Jesus Christ. So we need to make a, a quality decision to serve Jesus Christ. Who are we going to serve? I'm going to serve Jesus. I made that decision a long time ago. I made that decision when I was eight years old. 
I made that decision again when I was 14 years old. I made that decision again when I was 17 years old. I made that decision again when I was 23 years old and started in the ministry full time. I made that decision again when I was 36 years old when we moved to Colorado Springs to start that church. I have made that decision over and over and over again. And that decision is the ruling decision in my life. Jesus Christ is my Lord. What does Jesus want me to do? Number two, what are we going to believe? What are, what are we going to believe? Now, I want to go to Deuteronomy, and I want to look at this. Are you going to believe the word of God, or are you going to believe something else? You know, the, Jesus said, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. If you're going to follow Jesus, then you're going to believe the word. If you're going to go, go the way Jesus wants you to go, you're going to go the way the word is, because the word and Jesus are one. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy. I want to read these verses. I think these are powerful verses in Deuteronomy. These should help us. You know, talking about a key to faith. Make a quality decision to serve Jesus Christ. Make a quality decision to believe the word of God above everything else. Now, look at, let's look at this scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And we'll begin reading in Deuteronomy 30, uh, verse 11. And we'll read on down through verse 20. He says, for, for this commandment which I command you this day is not hidden from you, neither is it far off. It, it's not in heaven that you should say, be, uh, who, who, who will go up and bring it down? Now, now, this is amazing. Sometimes people say, well, the will of God's out there, but somebody's got to get it down. Or somebody's got to go. No, it's right there. It's, it, who shall go up to heaven and bring it down to us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who shall go over the sea for us to bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. The word is near you. You see, you don't, Jesus already came from heaven. And Jesus already went to the grave. Jesus already came from heaven, right? And, and Jesus already went to the grave and conquered the devil. And while he's on earth, he lived a sinless, holy, perfect, pure life. And, and so the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. What are you going to do with Jesus? That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Paul says in Romans chapter 10, he's actually quoting this. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 10, if you study this out from verse 6 on down through verse 10. Jesus already came from heaven, came to the earth, lived a sinless, holy, perfect life died on the cross for our sins, went to the grave, conquered the devil, God raised him from the dead and made him Lord. Now the word's near you, it's in your heart and in your mouth. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Your confession will follow what you believe at a heart level. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, that's a, another key to the element of faith. But number one, you've got to make a decision. I'm going to follow Jesus. So, so he's saying this. God, God goes on, says the word is near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. Nobody has to go up. It's not across the sea. It's not up in heaven. It's right before you. You make a choice. He says, see, in verse 15, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. You choose you choose your way. In that I command you this day to love God, walk in his ways, keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply. And the Lord thy God will bless you in the land that you're going to possess it. He's going to bless you where you're going. You make a decision to follow him. You choose life. If your heart turn away so that you will not hear and you're drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce to you today that you will surely perish and you will not prolong your days in the land where you pass over Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record to get this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love God and obey his voice, that you may cleave to him, for he is your life. And the length of days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. So God says, listen, I, I've set before you, I've given you a choice. It's life and death. It's blessing and cursing. Choose life. I'm telling you which way to choose. Now, when you choose life, you're going to love God, obey his voice, and cleave to him. Praise God. Now, when you choose life, in Deuteronomy 28, we find the blessing and the curses of the covenant. The first 14 verses are the blessings. And, and he says, uh, 
if, if, you, if you follow me, really, and follow my word, essentially is what he's saying, all these blessings will come on you and overtake you. If you hearken, listen to my voice. Verse 2. Then he says in verse 15, it come to pass if you will not listen to my voice to observe and to do what I tell you to do, that all these curses will come on you and overtake. So here's the blessing, here's the curse. Choose the blessing, choose life. Here's the curse, here's evil. Don't choose that. Praise God, I'm, I'm making it easy for you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Follow Jesus, amen? Now, these blessings of this covenant in the Old Testament were conditional, right, on their, really on their faith is what it amounted to. But as you look at it, it was conditional on their performance and they could never perform well enough. But Abraham was a blessed man and he was blessed because he believed. So they were conditional on their faith. And these blessings today are conditional on Jesus. So when you put faith in Jesus, you fulfill. Jesus is the one who fulfills the righteous requirement of the law. And all these blessings come on you and overtake you. Now, we go just a little bit farther into Deuteronomy chapter 29. And I want to read just a few verses here in Deuteronomy 29. I want to look at this in verse 9 through verse 15. So, so he says this in Deuteronomy 29. Keep, therefore, the words of this covenant. And do them that you may prosper in all that you do. You choose a blessing and you're going to prosper in all you do. You stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, captains, tribes, elders, officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, wives, stranger that's in the camp, that you should enter into covenant with the Lord and his oath the Lord God makes with you, that he may establish you today for a people to himself, and that he may be God to you as he said to you, and he's sworn to you. Then he says in verse 15, But him that stands with, here with us before the Lord our God and with him that is not here. In other words, this is not only for you, this is for those who are with you. Those who choose to make this decision to follow God with you. You know, when Israel left Egypt, there was a mixed multitude that went with them. Praise God. And, and they were people that chose to enter the covenant by putting their faith in God. And, and, and today, when you choose to follow Jesus Christ and receive him as your Lord, praise God, when you receive Jesus, you are blessed as a result of that. Because Christ became a curse for you, it says in Galatians 3.13, so that, in verse 14, the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that you might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So essentially what he's saying, when you believe in Jesus and believe the promises of God, God will bless you. God will bless your body. God will bless your family. God will bless your business. He'll bless your house. Now you say, well, I'm not receiving it. What are you believing? Did you make a decision to believe Jesus? Did you make a decision to believe the word? Did you make a decision? Because some people just think, well, I just whatever will be, will be. That's not going to get it. you got to make a choice. I'm going to believe the word above everything else. So, or the curse. Now, how's the curse come? Sickness, lack, slavery, death. All these are part of the curse. So you can get health, provision, freedom, peace. All that's in Jesus. All that's the blessing. So make a, make a choice. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to serve? I'm going to serve Jesus. Who am I going to believe? I'm going to believe the word of God. And whose plan am I going to follow? I am going to follow the plan of God. Now, we have an example of this in Hebrews chapter 11. We talked about a few of them at the beginning, but I want to go to one more example before we go off the broadcast today. Talking about Moses. Moses made a choice. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, it says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months of his parents, because that they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Sometimes people are so worried by the government that they don't believe God. He said, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, which for a season he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect to the repayment of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover, the sprinkling of the blood, that he would not be destroyed, that the destruction of the firstborn would not touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, talking about doing, were drowned. Thank God for faith in God. How, how can you see faith? Well, the number one key to faith that we talked about today, and we're going to talk about three more keys. So tell your friends about this broadcast. Tell them to tune into this broadcast. Praise God. You can watch it 
on the internet, watch it on television, different ways that you can get a hold of it. But I've been teaching from my series, Four Keys to Faith. If you want to get this entire message, you can give us a call. We have a special offer on this teaching today. We have it on CDs, and it's a great message, praise God. It's the message, really, that changed my life, the message of grace and the message of faith in God. Praise God. We'd love to get that out to you today. Now, faith in God will change your life. Faith in God will change your world. And you make the choice. Praise God. Have you chosen to believe on Jesus? Have you cho chosen, number one, to believe on Jesus? Have you chosen, number two, to believe the word of God above everything else? I'm going to believe the promise of God. I'm going to believe what God says about me, what God says about my health, what God says about my wealth, what God says about my family. I'm going to believe what God says about me. And number three, have you made a choice that you're going to follow God's plan? and God's will for your life. Did you know that God's plan for your life is better than your plan for your life any day of the week? I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this broadcast. I wanna say a great big thank you to all of our partners who help us make this broadcast available. We thank God for you, we appreciate you, we pray for you. We believe that when you enter into a covenant in partnership with this ministry, that there is a blessing that's on that covenant, praise God. We believe there's an anointing of increase on this ministry, and we believe that you can see that increase in your life as you come into relationship with Caris Christian Center and Grace for Today. I want to say a great big thank you to you. If you'd like to become a partner, we would love to hear from you today. And if you need prayer, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you give us a call today. We would love to hear from you. If you need prayer for healing in your body, give us a call today. Thanks so much, and God bless you. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000 or go to LawsonPurdue.com or write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.